Hey everyone, this is my second time setting up and technically I'm a newbie when it comes to a LinkedIn live or live stream. So I'd like to welcome everyone who's super patient with me because today is going to be something epic. I'm going to share with you tips, tricks and thoughts about how to create engaging content so then you can improve your presence on LinkedIn because when you improve your presence, you can find a job, convert clients better, build a following better, be a thought leader. There's so many benefits to being a personal brand or building a personal brand on LinkedIn. So for anyone who's watching, I love for you to share where you're watching from. And if you're re-watching this replay, I love to like comment below and say replay because then I get to know who watches it afterwards as well. So today I'm going to share with you the outline and the outline we're going to be talking about the good and bad of LinkedIn posts. What is a good written post? What is a bad written post? And how improve on it? What is a good video? And what is a bad video? And LinkedIn polls, because I feel like it's super underrated. So what is a good LinkedIn post, uh, LinkedIn poll? And what is a bad LinkedIn poll? Well, technically I don't see any bad ones, but I wanna show ways of you can improve on it. And if you want me to pick, um, I also love to pick three, yes, three profile visits. So if you are interested in making sure that you want to improve your profile or increase your profile, I'd love for you to comment below and share your LinkedIn profile below so that I could give you feedback on how to improve. I, I had a bit of a brain fart just then because I got distracted by Sophie's words and oh Massey it's not a replay it's like you're watching it really live so yes it is a really good quality because like I've been focusing on increasing my quality of my streams every week and I think this week I'm actually focusing on making sure my sync audio sync my voice and my video is aligned so let's without further ado post and i really really um want people to emphasize that when it comes to yeah when it comes to hey i have to stop reading comments because i get distracted yes i did have a brain fart moment um so what i'm trying to say is content needs to be engaging when you have conversations that are literally happening inside our chat right now which is what's happening on our linkedin because people are tuning in to have and learn and to level up their thinking as well and to network as well so linkedin has expanded and really like three years ago when i was on linkedin it wasn't like this where there's so much content out there linkedin literally was a resume platform a networking platform so if you're a salesperson then literally wouldn't it make sense to find all the decision makers on linkedin because linkedin decision makers uh um, i should say decision makers people who are in c-level areas business owners um, directors, they all hang out on LinkedIn. They might not be active, but they literally hang out on LinkedIn. So when you went to, oh, probably. Okay. Thanks for that. But I, I'm just going to keep going because I realized I didn't put the audio. Oh, no, that's really works. So I'm just going to keep going because I know the mic's working there. And what I'm trying to say is that content needs to be focused on and Truthfully, I find that a lot of professionals are crappy content creators. You're really smart here. But when it comes to delivering content, you're not very good at knowing how to trigger engagements. You use passive tone. You The way people read on social media is almost like it's conversational. And I find that people write in past tense. So these little nuances, like I pick up on it, but... For people who don't write copywriting or create content on a regular basis, they don't notice these little things and notice that it actually impacts the way we engage on content. So, and when you think about it, if you look at the chat right now, people are actually writing in active language. Thanks, Brian. So for example, Brian says, looking forward to your talk. That's how people talk in real life. They don't say, I look forward to you look forward to watch your talk later. They don't think like that. So you need to know how to capture people's attention within the timeline and feed. And what I'm trying to say is like, when we look at content like this, 
and I'm back. All right, I'm going back here. Thank you, Mitchell. Thank you, everyone. I realized like I didn't sync my road mic properly. So I want to like go back into our feed experience. So this Devon lady, just Lauren lady, actually should say, has gone gangbusters viral. So viral that literally she only posted twice, twice. So I'm trying to figure out why did she go super viral? As a content creator, I'm always thinking about how can we think about content in a way that engages people's attention. And, and would, would I be sexist to say, and I fully admit this, that being a hottie makes a difference on LinkedIn because I have, I have a theory, right, that selfie photos work. She's quite attractive. And I have to say, people don't like when I say this, but being attractive is an advantage as well, especially because it's brand recognition and people are consciously attracted to beautiful things. And my friend Devon has gone super viral as well. And she only has like less than 2000 followers. And also I find that what's interesting is that, um, that she, you know, doesn't, her engagement is like three. But there's this one post that went gangbusters. Uh, let me find that post again. Went gangbusters. Now she has 19,000. So that was a week ago. So I'm going to analyze these two posts just because we could learn a lot from this. Uh, what do you think? I don't get your live streams on my... You have to... I don't know how to turn them on. And I've been thinking about... Well... If you follow me on YouTube, you get my notifications as well. Anyway, so I'm trying to think about why did Lauren and Devon get viral? And I have to say it's because they maybe they're attractive, but also the content is super relatable within the industry as well. So I have to say the watch it Lauren did correct in terms of getting engagement is making sure that first line is correct. What do I mean by correct is because it's because why I changed my LinkedIn profile pic is a headline. So did Devon. Devon actually said something that triggers conversation within the sales industry. Hang up on a VP of sales who was upset I got his number from Zoom info and people who are in the sales industry, they know what Zoom info is as well. And they know the pain point of being hung up by cold calls as well. So I find that these two posts, these headlines is engaging, but really when you read through a post, it actually is a relatable post. And I think it because, you know, people remember, like I have a hypothesis that people don't want to be all about professional. Oh, okay. Thanks, Deb. That hasn't happened before. Okay, let's just keep it to one screen, Deb. Thanks for that. That hasn't happened in my last streams before, and I have all these links. So when I'm going, let me, let me go through. <laughs> I will not switch links anymore, right? So let me look at Deb's things first, and then we'll move on to Devon's, and then I'll go move on to a bad example of a post. Uh, so I just want to go back into, can, can you hear me now as well? <laughs> this is like, in, I had a feeling today's will be a shocker. I find that Devon's, uh, that Lauren's post is actually really good because it's super relatable. It's all about the first headline. So if you want to improve your content post, just improve that first line, improve this line a lot of times a lot of people will do something that's like this which is not good right so when you write like a chunk of text like that people don't you don't stop the scroll you people you need to do the first headline should be optimized as if it was a blog post a subject email think of ways to really grab people's attention and i'm going to look at devon's banks one just to prove a point so devon banks had a really good post that went viral as well just because of this one line and it was super relatable so salespeople, i find that if you know how to trigger people's attention it's that first line hey harling you could be my backup person apparently my stream is not on point today 
but I'm still go-go. Um, and the, uh, I'm going to show you a, a, what is a bad example of a written post. I'm not, and it's unfortunate because I could see that Hassan writes really good engagement, but what he did wrong is he treated it like this as if it was an Instagram post or these hashtags. It's correct that he um, tag Mark, but what he did was like bombarded with hashtags. So this is what I call a bad example of a content because it looks spammy and he's a professional as well. So what I'm trying to say is that don't do hashtags like crazy like this. Yes, don't do that. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, right. So what I'm trying to say is that it looks it quite it looks quite spammy. I don't mind. You know, you could actually tag people in here as well. So you don't need to tag people religiously like this because it also comes off as spammy. So you could tag people in your content posts as well. Here's another. Here's another bad example of a content as well. Um, so Tony Hughes has 300,000 followers, but he treats his content uh, like his LinkedIn feed as if it was Twitter. So I feel like he posts, let's, let's count this one, two, oh, oh, that, that's one hour. Okay. Let me count this one, two, three, four, five. Six. Oh, that's okay. But he, in, but what I what I notice is that people treat the feed as if it was as Twitter, and but the focus should be on engagement. So for someone who has three hundred thousand followers, isn't that a missed opportunity for engagement? Which kind of shows that he's either pushing too much and he's not training his algorithm, or he doesn't know how to treat algorithms. But also this like block of text. You don't want to read that, right? Uh, I recommend that the hashtags that you should follow is definitely five, but if the, and I already did this post previously about hashtags already. So you could watch that previously. And I just think about when you create content, try not to do block of content like this. Yeah, Deb, uh, you gave me feedback that every time I switch to a different window, sound is bad. So I'm trying to like keep it consistently to one window at a time. So yeah. Uh, okay. Who asked? I do. Oh, I want to show you videos because I feel like enough about content, but I feel like this is actually a bad post as well, because when you link out to YouTube, what it does is LinkedIn doesn't want you to like push out to a different side of things. They want you to focus on being inside LinkedIn. So pushing things out like a link out or a video out, it kind of encourages you to, the best analogy that I describe it is like you're leaving a door open for and giving people permission to stop reading your content. It's like going, you're letting them go through that door, right? When you go through that door, you let them go through the YouTube and YouTube has actually a better significant content feed that trains people to show videos that you like. So you often ignore LinkedIn because LinkedIn hasn't been trained to see show or surface content that is aligned to your interests and to align to your jobs yet. So that's why I find that LinkedIn is a baby in terms of discovery compared to Facebook or compared to like YouTube. And YouTube is probably the best, the best. It's a beast pretty much in terms of surfacing content that's related to your industry and related to your post as well. So I'm trying to think about, like, think about that. How do you, that's why you don't encourage link outs, but it's a good way. Um, if you need to push out links, you need to put it into the comments. Remember that. Okay. Um, so if you want to see a bad example, this is actually Tony is what I call a traditional poster on LinkedIn. He's not really engaging. He's just pushing for the sake of pushing content, which is not really great because what you're doing is training people to say, oh, 
I'm not really providing high value. I'm just like posting for the sake of posting. So think about that. Uh, who else do I like? Oh, when you go do videos as well. Let me show you something. And let me show you something as well. This is my feed at the moment. And yes, this is my numbers. Um, I don't mind sharing it. At one point when I was peaking and I was pushing out twice a day, I had like about 25,000 profile visits. So if you want a metric of knowing success, when especially when it comes to content, it's not about views or likes. It's actually how many people visit your profile. Yes. Okay. So Jara is good because I she's part of my the trusted circle and she is using the headline. So this is what I think is a good post because it's already got a tick. Yes, it's got a tick in terms of like creating that first line. And the goal of these games is to see more. So she wrote it in a way that's super easy to read. And also if you look at the hashtags, I probably should give her this feedback. You have to find out a hashtag with amount of followers that's worthwhile. So virtual meetings, if you write Zoom, I feel like Zoom has more um, hashtags or followers. So I find that 409 followers is not a good hashtag to follow because it kind of shows that not a lot of people are following that. But if you follow culture hero, virtual cu culture, these three hashtags will actually decrease. So this means like there's only nine followers. So think about the hashtag that you're trying to think about that will increase your discovery, not diminish your discovery. And if there's less than 10,000, it kind of shows that it's not popular enough. So try to find ones that will give you that will increase your engagement. Going back, this is what I call a messy, messy, don't do this, messy content. It's too overwhelming. The colors clashes, like it hurts my eyes. It really hurts my eyes. Um, so St Stanley is good. This is actually a good video because if anything, I try to like zoom in more because people like talking to people but it kind of shows a nice view, nice look. Um, the only thing that I recommend to Stanley is that he improves his first line to make it more trigger happy. You want people to engage with your content. Um, this is what I call a weak, weak headline. Over the last myself, yeah, I'll probably, what I'll improve on this is like 2.28 million visitors has 2.8 million people have visited my site just from be just from Google. So that itself could be really punchy, but this seems a really a bit weak in terms of passive tone. So if it, if I write it, I write 2.28 million people have visited my site or from Google. See the difference between what I've written and what Brian written? And he's really good at that. Usually like I watch his YouTube videos on how to do YouTubes a lot, but now he's been, now he's pushing black backlinker because that's his product that he wants to push. Okay. Photos, photos, photos. This is a great photo, but low engagement. So let's see. Oh, that's because of the share. Okay. PDFs is something that's worth checking out as well. Uh, yeah. Okay. Shay is really good with videos, which segues into the next things about video. Okay. All right. I'm going to show you what a high quality video looks like. When I mean by high quality, I meant by you spend $5,000 or more on budget. And that's not a typical budget to spend on videos, but there are many types of meditation. Standing, the volume is walking. Low. I just don't want to show that, but I want to show you what a, this is what a, a branded video looks like in terms of high quality, an editor, uh, multiple camera angles, really dynamic. This is not what a typical person will be doing in terms of creating content. So this is something that is ad worthy in terms of attention, but, and everyone expects videos to be like this. That's not the case. So let me emphasize that you don't have to do videos like this every day that, and that's not what we should be doing every day as well. Um, the kind of videos that you should be thinking about is, let me look at Shay's one, like 
Steven's one is probably a good example of an easy video that's really thin. But be careful about this angle. Like the first second is your default cover and this is awkward, really awkward, right? Um, let me show you what a video is. So I feel like Steven is an example of a video person that you could maintain for anyone could do and see how it's super easy. But if I were you, I think about smiling more in your videos um, and he's getting engagement with it and he only posts one per week. I actually don't agree with these colors. It's clashes too much things, but I give him points in terms of like just maintaining cadence of weekly content of videos and doing weekly videos is doable. And what he did was like, he made most of the squares. I'm going to show you one of my people's Daniel Bang. So Daniel joined my five day challenge. And what he did was I given him a script, I given him something to do and Hi, I'm Daniel. Yeah, and, and he today. really, really, this is what I call a an easy way of doing videos. Yeah, the videos is increases your trust factor by 10 times. So that's why I encourage videos, even though the numbers of views is less, but the people who actually watch and like engage, you're actually building up a faster relationship with them. So the trust factor increases dramatically. So what I'm trying to say is that do videos as part of your content mix. Um, a lot of times people will hold back on doing videos because of fear of rejections, looking stupid. You know, there's a lot of like chicken inside one's head in saying, hey, don't do video because you go look crap. You go look stupid. You should do like strings, high polished 5K video types just to maintain brand authenticity, but that's not authentic. That's not authentic. These are authentic. If anything, every time that I do these five day challenges to help people video confidence, I always give them feedback about it, saying, hey, look at the light, think about smiling more, think about the first second of your video as well. So what I'm trying to do is say that you need to do videos on a frequent basis to improve on it. And the next video is like take feedback, improve on your next one and do one thing at a time to optimize your video presence. Every time you push out a new video, just like what I do here, I find that the first 10 minutes is me just being frazzled with LinkedIn live streams or my live streams in general. But what I do is I fix it up on the go and then I just improve. And after the 15 minute mark, I seem to be chill. Or I should say the 10 minute mark, I'm settled in, I get what I'm doing, I'm in flow and I'm just helping people improve their LinkedIn videos or LinkedIn posts as well. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is this is the type of video that you should go for. I'm using your smartphone and he uses a smartphone as well. His smartphone... Um, by doing push in smartphones and adding text, you increase the video retention and attention. So doing that and he kudos points to just the fact that he added that first one line. And why do I share this video type? Because these are the video types that we should aim. This is your benchmark in terms of creating videos. Yes. And do it weekly, having words, having text, because most people watch the videos offline. Um, and that's why I do the five day challenge. If you go to www.thetrustedvoice, oh, I'm writing on the go, five day, uh, this is the link. You will see, oh, wrong link. Oh ttvtrustedvoice.co. I got the wrong link. Does that work? No. I forgot that. All right. Yeah, that works now. There's going to be video scripts that allows you to really help you do better on videos. So check that out. Um, what else is there? Oh yeah, we need to do polls because polls is super underrated and I want to show you why because a lot of times 
try, people try to like make it super complicated and make it the whole goal of polls is to click 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 so you want to have something that's easily engageable and people just type and click what they want so don't make it overthink it people it's actually try to be as minimal as possible and engaging as possible and that way by doing that you ensure people will tune in to your future polls as well so i use these future polls as a way to help control and navigate my topics for each like linkedin live streams but for a person who does it really well i'm going to introduce john yu her side he's he's a content creator and he uses that to his advantage, but it is also a marketer as well. So his polls actually grabs in people's attention by just making it super easy like this. He has 2000 people engaging with his polls every week and, and he's making it super easy, you know, to consume. And he knows what the content and he knows what content people want to hear. What, what's the main reason you check LinkedIn? Is it to consume content, to produce content, to find a new job, to recruit others for a job? So this kind of shows that people are looking for good content, but not producing enough. And people are finding jobs as well, meaning that they consume content. So you should really think about content as a way to engage attention. And when doing poll games, um, if, he does have an advantage of like having 44,000 followers. Um, but you need to start somewhere, right? Oh, what else do I, okay. I'm going to pick. It's a recap content written content does the best. Make sure it's all about the first headline. Second thing is videos actually grabs attention and make sure that has captions because people or professionals on LinkedIn really care about reading more than watching. If you don't have any audio, I mean, if you don't have any words or captions into your videos, people go to it out. Really, they do. Third thing is that polls is super underrated that you should do that. It's probably the easiest thing to do compared to you know doing videos or doing content posts and any if you learn anything from Devon's or with the Lauren's lady post uh, post that went super gangbusters in terms of virality it's because they create a content that was super relatable and it's all about leveraging that first line so if you know how to trigger attention and tr you know your topic back to front you know the people that you need to grab attention to that will help you leverage LinkedIn. It's all about that first line. It, for everything that I do, like when it comes to copywriting, Twitter, emails, LinkedIn posts, it's all about that first line. All right, let's pick people that I want to like. Oh yeah, I'm going to do Holly. I've been meaning to do Holly's. So now we're going to be talking about for our reviews. And I've been wanting to do Holly's one for a while. So if you want me to pick your profile, comment below your LinkedIn URL. And I'm happy to like do profiles. I'm going to only pick three this time. Oh, yes. Holly, can you hired? She's definitely a coach. And the fact that she leverages her expertise here kind of shows that, hey, like, you know, branding, credibility, it works. And she's a certified career coach for executive and technology leaders. So she knows who her target market is as well. Um, this bit I'm a little bit confused about, but I think this is her products that she's promoting, which makes sense, right? Um, She's also, it's really good. This is something that a lot of people don't do a lot properly is that they don't hook in like the providing services as well. By doing that, it actually increases your LinkedIn discoverability. So I think that's really good that she does that. So I recommend that you add services provided into your, um, into your LinkedIn profile because a lot of people don't do that. Uh... Oh, cool. There's 16 people watching me. Um, 
so headlines is important if you and she's got a really clear brand which i give points to she's a career coach helping executives and technology lead leaders and she looks like she's helping them get jobs inside google amazon facebook and microsoft so this is probably the one of the strongest things i have seen so far if anything i feel like um her your about could be broken up you could even just like um, for the last 20 years i helped thousands of professional land a offer at top deck jobs if in, i probably this is what you know yeah i would what i do here is i will press enter from onwards here to make it easy to read so your i know and the whole goal is to increase your see more as well but this is great this makes it easy to read. I don't mind people using emojis like as a bullet point because what it does, it increases your readability as well. The only thing that's like um, that I'm not really happy with, but people probably you have a really good in terms of a um, your emails through is that it's not clickable. So if anything, it kind of shows that people won't do this people won't copy it and paste and what they do is they try to click on to this so if anything i encourage you to go down into this and it's like hey click on i have all my especially with your videos in here it's like i have all the videos click on the videos below to watch my youtube videos because you have a really good presence on youtube and i feel like your engagement on youtube is much better on linkedin i mean on youtube than linkedin so Let's look at your content post as well. So your content post is, yeah, images do really poorly on here. If anything, I'll probably cut up the videos up and push people to watch. So you have so much content, it's just a matter of uh, creating content that's suitable for LinkedIn. And there are so many people looking for jobs here and finding advice. So you may as well give them content that they want to see because the more they comment onto it, the more the network effect happens as well. So Holly, I just recommend that you cut up your videos and the best bits and, it's like, and then link them on the bottom. And it's like watch more at my YouTube channel. I have a and I reckon you will increase your content, um, your presence on LinkedIn dramatically because your audience is here. Oh, let me look at your other content as well. Because I know and I'm seeing in person how hyper engaged you are. So what I'm trying to say is that even doing this is better and also very, see how written posts, very exciting news is doing better than your videos and links and your videos so it kind of shows that people like native content so do more content please that's native to the experience of here all right cool next person that i want to do is sophie and george All right, George. You, um, you, I don't. What award did you win? Yeah, Pu and public speaker. I have to say, being a public speaker doesn't really matter much, especially since that COVID nineteen happens. So I'm wondering if it, it's worth putting it up there, and your banner needs to re be replaced because I can't read it properly yeah um yeah. um you actually fit in like i actually encourage you to check out and join the trusted circle because i know that you're pushing content for someone who has fourteen thousand followers i feel like your content could be better yeah you need to smile more <laughs> this post like a lot of people always like think see how you like warm here in your profile pic but here you look like i don't want to be here so be careful with the kind of face emotions that you depict on yourself because you're giving people permission to not engage or build rapport with you and i don't know if pink is your color so i feel like there's some mix, mix match of this as well um photos don't do so well this looks messy not on brand uh i know that you do live on a regular basis you should introduce your cat more because people love cats yes that's your hook your cat is your hook 
And I find that you need to think about your first headline as well. Your headline is pretty shit. It doesn't really engage people. And you always say data, data, but you have to think about what is the result of data that people want to hear. Is it because they um, increase their retention, increase thing? People don't know. It's all about what is the result that you give with the use of data. And a lot of people think it's like, oh, the trigger word is data. No, people get switched off by data. But business, if you're trying to attract the attention of business owners and CEOs, what are the content that they will click on? What are the subject lines are they thinking about? So I feel like you're missing opportunities with this. Um, I didn't get this joke. Maybe I'm missing something here. Uh, you know, um, so you have to, and I don't, is TikTok related to you in terms of data or are you promoting your TikTok presence? So for me, when I look at content, I actually look at content to see if it backs your thing. This doesn't want, this content doesn't back up your content. Being on TikTok doesn't back up your content. And TikTok is not landscape. It's actually vertical experience. Um, this, um, make sure that you're looking at the camera and smiling at the more, uh, See, and you know data gone wrong is actually quite a strong headline but you didn't optimize for that experience um yes I, i'm always happy to see more of your cat you should probably introduce your cat more on a regular basis because that will grab people's attention because people like cats okay looking at your profile again your banner needs to be replaced great profile pick you could do something a little bit more um people don't type data governance so you have to think about the job title that you want to um, leverage for SEO wise. And I like, there's too much emojis here. You're not in high school. Try to be simple. Like I don't mind emojis. I love emojis. I use fried chicken emojis all the time, but you should really think about what is the emoji that you want to use as part of your lexicon, because what I've seen is a mess. Uh, and your po your summary needs to be engaging and stuff like that. So I actually think there's no call to action as well. Um, there's nothing, you have to think about who is the person reading your post. At the moment, me, look at George, 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 when in reality, the person that you want to attract to have conversations about you about data is a business owner or a CEO or someone who fundamentally will pay your bills, right? You need to write a, a love letter, a cover letter that grabs their attention, but you're not doing that at the moment. I know definitely, definitely I'm not your target market, but if I'm thinking if the target market is CEOs and I read this, I do not resonate with what you're trying to do and you're just promoting yourself. So think about like, how can I convert and build up trust factor in this as well? So that's my feedback to you. Um, Otherwise, like, you know, you know that you're doing well based on the amount of profile visits you have and you post quite regularly, but I don't think you get an engagement that you want to get the right attention. And for me, even though I have less than everyone else, I, it's all about conversions for me. So if anything, I invite you to join the, like the, um, the trusted circle, because I feel like you're my, you're pretty much my key target market, a thought leader, someone who wants to leverage LinkedIn and build up the right audience, but not knowing how to convert them properly as well. Cool. So one more person who I go pick, um, oh, freezing, I'm freezing. Oh, thanks. Um, I'm going to pick Sophia. Oh. one more then i'm done for the day so if you want again the trusted circle.co is definitely pe for people who really 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 want to leverage linkedin and build up a brand and know how to engage content as well so what <laughs> no mum can't mum one wants to talk to me no mum i don't know how to turn off the sound No, decline mom. Okay, I have to decline my mom. I have to call her later. Um, so. Uh, Sophia, like you're so new into this that I feel like you want a job, but 
doing this doesn't really make you grab attention. So my goal is like, what are you trying to achieve in terms of get, grabbing the attention? Um, are you trying to like get a job or show that um, you're building up your skill sets and portfolio? So I recommend that you build up your connections within the space because at the moment when I see this, I see a newbie. And unfortunately, you're like, you're not very active on LinkedIn at the moment. Um, and you look like you're just getting, just building up your portfolio of skill sets. So I recommend that you go through the last three jobs or something like that and outline what you learned in each job because that will help you show that you're hireable and marketable and that you want to get hired. This doesn't, um, it's good that you do this, but it doesn't really do anything. If you're doing a marketer, you should really think about the game of social media. It's like, how do I post? How do I get increased engagement? And the best advice I could give you is that you should build up your connections and comment in relevant industries like myself, that, which is what you're doing really well. Um, like in, So you need to follow other marketer influences. So then you increase your network and connect with other people who are really interesting to you. So that's the only advice I could give you. I probably like you for someone who knows how to do graphic design and you say you're a graphic designer and social media, this is not a very good banner. Are you really happy with this banner? And Samia, I, uh, I'm, oh, that's about it. So thanks for everyone. And if you, what I usually do is I give kudos and points and give feedback like this in the community, um, inside the trusted circle. Samia, you're like, definitely, I could tell already that, uh, that you really need to think about creating content and reaching out to people. Otherwise people don't know who you are. I'll probably do one more. Thanks, George. Yeah, you're not active on LinkedIn. And I don't, this about is really lackluster. And it doesn't really show your sales skills at all. Like what are the, isn't sales all about results? Isn't sales how much money you bring? Isn't sales all about like, you know, converting? Like I've been hanging out with a lot of SDRs and AEs and I know for sure that your profile doesn't really say anything. And a lot of AEs and salespeople are definitely, definitely hanging out on LinkedIn to convert better and build up rapport with their prospects. So I feel like what you're doing is not real, like, you know, and you need, this is an unprofessional photo. So you need to have a photo that is more professional with less people. It's about you, not about people in the background. Um, see how like Aaron has a better photo than you. So see how Aaron is, is a nice photo versus your Samir. So I probably just like give you back on that feedback. Um, I, I don't see any backgrounds or details about your role in senior executive. So think about results. What are the, your results? I don't see any results at all. Okay, cool. I'm from the trusted circle. If you want me to give you feedback, this is where, I, this is what I typically do every day for my community and my members. We think about how to like your branding, your positioning, and ways you could improve your LinkedIn and content as well. So I always give feedback on content on a regular basis because every time you improve, you will increase your visibility and grow an audience on LinkedIn. So I tune in next week. And Sophia, if you like, I feel like you're still in the early stages. Just keep exploring. Samia, so you definitely need to, like I already gave enough feedback from the other three that you could like start thinking about what you're doing at the moment. You're you're almost like on the Sophie level at the moment. You're not creating content or your LinkedIn profile. It's kind of shows that you're not really active on LinkedIn. Okay. Thanks everyone. I'm going to be inside my trusted circle. Go be inside the trusted voice, helping others do video better. And I look forward to helping more others. If you want me to give you more feedback, dropping your comments below or go into the trustedcircle.co and see if that aligns with you and you want to grow your LinkedIn. See you there.